in the past, I've had a struggle with money that was like, it's hard. And once you get it, it'll go away really fast. And it all could go away in a blink of an eye. Um, you know, so many things and you're only going to have just enough, but you're going to really work really hard for pennies and all these things. Uh, that's probably the biggest one. And it's that scarcity mindset of survival mode with money, you know, instead of thriving mode. <laughs> Real quick, before we dive into today's episode, I have a free gift for you. In celebration of my new program, Money Magnetics, I'm giving away my Money Magnetics guided meditation. Ooh, say that five times fast. <laughs> to you for free. Every time I do this meditation, I kid you not, if I do it for a few days in a row, money magic seriously happens. It really, really works. I cannot wait to share it with you. You can download it now at kelseyaida.com slash MM freebie, MM for money magnetics. Find this link in the show notes and you'll have to send me a message on Instagram to let me know how it goes for you. Enjoy. Hello, hello, beautiful people on the other side of this podcast. We love you so much. Welcome back to another episode of High Vibe It. It's your home girls, Kelsey Aida and Lindsay Robinson. I'm a best-selling author and transformation facilitator. And Lindsay is a world-renowned hypnotherapist extraordinaire. And together, we produce this show to help you live your best life, love yourself, manifest all the goodies, and today we are talking about money manifestation. If you missed it, we already did a part one to this episode that was super awesome. Lots of do's and don'ts. We talked about some of our favorite intention setting practices when it comes to manifesting more money. Um, some of the hiccups where people get stuck, how to kind of navigate those. Um, so look out for part one of this episode if you haven't already. And today we are doing part two. And this all was inspired because... I've been feeling really strongly in the collective that people are wanting to master their finances, wanting to really feel safe, secure, abundant, wanting to really just master their money energetics. And so Lindsay and I are totally here for that. We're also on the journey with you, always learning, up-leveling, manifesting more and more money. So I was thinking it would be fun to start by sharing like some money manifesting success stories just like personal ones that we have just to give people some entertainment and uh excitement <laughs> yeah so um can we first talk about that one that one that we were yeah <laughs> well that's kind of a personal one for both of us to be honest yeah that's why we should start with it so yeah you got to tell it from your point of view because it really happened to you okay so Lindsay was doing what type of thing were we doing? We were doing hypnosis work, but I don't remember. Was it like specifically for? It financial? was for money. Yeah. Okay. It was yeah. for removing blocks to money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we were doing a removing blocks hypnosis. Lindsay was facilitating for me. And I don't remember exactly what happened in the session, but I remember that during the session, my grandma of all people sent me like $200, <laughs> like right as I was doing the work when we were wrapping up the session and I realized I had manifested that money right when I was doing the work. I was like, oh my gosh, Lindsay, look at us go. It was yeah, it's pretty magical. Such perfect timing. <laughs> um, Yeah, I always love that one. I still think about that one just because it was like, it, it's, 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 it's just so fast. It's so Instantaneous. Fast. When you have your mind in the right place and when your intention, and I think that's the biggest thing I've had, um, you know, for myself as well, but my biggest successes are when I can say, see, I told you guys, this is magical. And usually that happens when a client has these successes happen. So it's a convincer for them that, oh my gosh, this is real. But it really is like when you say yes to yourself and when you're allowing the process and just kind of like feeling good about the process, it really is so fast, so, so fast. And that's kind of um, kind of what brings me to, to mind. Is it my turn now? Yeah, let's just go back and forth for a couple of, couple of good stories. So my favorites, I have this thing where I don't really usually notice it as like when it happens. But I have what I do that's a dream jar. Do you guys maybe remember me talking about the dream jar where you write down all your goals, big and little, you know, your your future goals, your more recent goals, like anything you want to manifest in the next few weeks, months, year, whatever, and just put it all in this jar. 
I like to keep mine uncovered because I like the energy to flow in and out, but some people like to put the cover on it. It really is up to you. But anyway, my biggest manifestation stories happen when I go back to that jar because the idea is you're supposed to meditate on one every day and then go back and see which ones have manifested. So when I review those goals and I see what's manifested, I am always like blown away at things I forgot that I even wrote down. Um, little things like in terms of in terms of money, like I want to hit a specific goal per month or I want to hit a specific goal for the whole year. Uh, yeah, hit it and probably and exceeded it or I don't want to say doubled it, but pretty close one year I doubled it. And I'm just like, dang, this stuff is crazy. Like, it's so crazy. Like when you, when you're able to, as again, we said this last episode, but when you're able to write it down and see it in front of you, I don't care how long you've been doing it. I don't care how expert you are in this. It is still, and it should be, I think to some degree, still very amazing and um, uh, just overwhelmingly awesome. Like how, how quickly and how wonderfully these goals can happen for you. Um, So really I notice that stuff when I go back and review Um, once or twice, I'm trying to think of a specific example where I actually saw it happen in real time, but while I'm thinking, why don't you do your next one? Yeah. So I have another (laughs) recent one. That's just kind of like a funny one. So that meditation that I told you guys about on part one, the guided meditation that I made for myself that you can download for free on my website, I'll link it in the show notes. Um, I was listening to it and right when I was done listening to it, I checked my emails and someone had gifted us like money for our honeymoon fund because everyone's like sending gifts right now for the wedding. And somebody sent us a thousand dollars as a wedding gift. And I was like, wow, generous. Like that is so nice of them. And also coincidence on the timing. Like I think. Mm. (laughs) Yes. You know, yes, it was very well received at the time it was. Oh, yeah. Um. By the way, did you get what I picked for your wedding? Yes. Did you get it? Yes, I that got was it. the cool. Did you get the note? Yes, <laughs> that was I wrote. She she had the registry, so I picked something off the registry, and I wrote in the note like this was by far the coolest thing on your list. <laughs> it was Not a grounding the- mat for anyone who's yes. listening, which is basically just like for lazy people who don't want to go outside and lay on the ground. But I mean, for winter, well, you gotta for have winter. It. Yeah, you got to have it for winter. Yeah, definitely. I saw this because Abel was just talking to me about something where this guy wired himself like in his bed, but he like wired himself to the outside so that even when he was in his house, like sleeping on his bed, he was still getting all the benefits. And that's what it reminded me of. Like the day after Abel told me this, I was like, oh, this is definitely meant to be. So I got that one for you. Yeah, because my sister actually want one one too. My sister has one and she like raves about it. And so I was like, well, I'm a fool and I might wait a minute. She, maybe someone will gift it to me. Like what a fun gift. You know, the weirdo is going to do it. And I was like, I'll do it for you. you. got me that gift. Makes sense. Makes sense. Of course I will. Of course I will. Tell everybody what it's called so they can get it if they want. It's like earthing mat or something. It's just called like a grounding mat or an earthing mat or something like that. I can yeah. link to it in the show notes. I'll probably forget, but um, well, if you forget, I'm linking it in the show notes. <laughs> if you forget, just Google it or look it up on Amazon because that's where I found it. So anyway. Um, yeah. So you got a thousand dollars unexpectedly. Yeah. It I was love sweet. that. But I think like, you know, maybe we need to talk about like some more like sustainable money manifesting examples. Cause like gifts are nice, but like, you're not going to get those every day, you know? Yeah. Like, but random you said surprises the, the are coolest awesome. stories. That, that's a cool story. Yeah. It's a good story. Um, yeah. More sustainable ways. Well, I just think <laughs> the easiest thing that I forget It's so funny how we forget that. Two things that I forget the most that are the easiest thing to do. A, gratitude. B, visualization. I don't know what it is. Best time to do it is 30 minutes after you wake up, 30 minutes before bed. I forget most days (laughs) to do this. And I just, you know, in my defense, I got a lot going on, but I could set a reminder. I could set an alarm, but I also want to feel inspired to do it. I don't want to feel like I'm on a schedule, but I will say if you are able to as often as you can, morning, night, whenever, five minutes of visualizing yourself in the place you want to be or in the state or in the emotional, you know, whatever worth it. Gratitude and visualization, easy, easy, easy takes seconds and can do and can build major momentum. And I would challenge everyone to shoot for like 11 to 12 minutes. Cause you, mm-hmm. if you can hit that threshold, I don't know the exact science behind it, but I know for a fact that if you get to that threshold, you build a lot more energetic momentum than just like, say, five to eight minutes. There's something about the 11 to 12 minute mark that kind of like puts you over the edge vibrationally when you have like intense focus on something. Um, 
So shoot for like at least 10 to 12 minutes if you have the time. Well, um, which, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I love that. I think as long as you're not, well, yeah, 12 minutes is nothing. You could do 12 minutes yeah, for sure. It goes by fast. Then there's Abraham Hicks who says 17 seconds of pure thought can do the same amount as like 30 minutes or whatever. So I don't know, guys, feel it out. I think 12 minutes is a good measurement. I, I think if it's hard for you to do 12 minutes, um, one of the best pieces of advice I've ever heard is like, you cannot get it wrong. So if you can't do 12 minutes, do one minute. And when you can do one minute, do three minutes. When you can do three minutes, do five minutes. Like there's no wrong way to do it really, as long as your intention is good. Um, but yeah, I would, I've tried the 17 seconds. I do that with my dream jar. Actually, I use the 17 second. I hold it to my heart and I just visualize for 17 seconds done manifestation for the day done. Um, but, but if you can do longer, highly recommend all my hypnosis are like 13, 14, 15 minutes. And I think that you're right. There is some kind of magic in letting your body, uh, dip that low into trance. And that's when the real, uh, the real magic happens, but yeah, anything you can do is good. And I'm just distracting from your point. 12 minutes is fine. Also, 17 seconds might be good for you too. Just if there's a will, there's a way. That's the point. Yeah, as long as you're not undoing all that attendance anywhere throughout the rest of the day with your yeah. thoughts of lack and your feelings of ungratefulness and yeah. your general bad relationship to money, then yes, it will be helpful. But you have well, to remember which the rest of the day too. Like, yeah. you know, your vibe is always vibing so do your best and be it aware. does happen you know like if you feel negative just notice it like oh I feel negative what does this feel like well it doesn't feel good I don't like this feeling what what choice do I have right now do I have a choice yes yes you do you do spoiler you have a choice do I have a choice okay well if I'm choosing to feel this way how else could I choose to feel what could I do to distract myself from this feeling because sometimes sometimes you just need a good distraction from feeling crappy so go do something fun or silly uh watch your favorite show and and till you can get back in the high vibes because you will always be able to get back into the high vibes if you give it enough time yes can I tell my favorite money manifesting let's do it is it sustainable though <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a new okay. it's a new one. I think I it's did tell one. it briefly on a different episode, but I want to go like more in depth because this is so crazy, y'all. Like so crazy. So I have been on this just general kick of like embracing more ease and flow in my life, not just financially, but like in all areas. Like, how can I just stop overcomplicating things and making them harder than they need to be and over executing and being such like addicted to high achieving yeah. person that I can be? So I was doing a lot of money manifestation work with my meditation. And then I also like to, I don't know if you guys follow Teal Swan, but she has these cool frequency paintings that she makes because she can see energy. And so she'll like depict how she sees certain energies onto a painting. And you can just download like the the um, like PDF version of it and have it like on your computer and stuff. So I'll meditate on the image of the frequency and then it like attunes you to the frequency. Mm. So I was doing that a bunch. I was doing my guided meditation. I was, you know, scripting, working through my limiting beliefs. And then I was just like, universe, not to be like micromanagey or anything, but can you send me the money just in the easiest way possible for me? Like, yeah. I want to know what easier money feels like. I want to know what like massive abundance that I don't have to put massive effort into would feel like. And when I was saying that, this was like only a couple of weeks of doing this work. Um, like out of nowhere, Jeff got this new job opportunity and like we have shared finances. So to give context, Jeff got this new job opportunity to become a commercial real estate broker. And it's cool because I feel like we manifested this together because I was doing that work. And then he was doing the work of like, man, I really am great at selling, but I want to sell the most expensive thing. Like I want to make higher transactions every time I sell something. And I mean, there's very few things more expensive than commercial real estate. <laughs> They're really expensive. I mean, these apartment complexes are like sometimes tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. And like, as soon as I set that intention out there, it felt like the next day he got this email like, oh, 
I remember we interviewed with you in the past, but like, we thought of you for this new opportunity. Like you're the guy, like, can you please like come on our team? We know you're not even a real estate agent. We just know you're really good at sales and like, we'll train you and you'll get your certification and licensing and everything. And I mean, now he's probably going to start making, this is still in the process, but probably like 10 X what he used to make. Yeah. Which is redonkulous. <laughs> First of all, because he didn't make bad money before. He was still Imagine like, if any if all of you listening made 10 times what you were making right now. I don't care uh, what you're making, unless it's zero, because 10 times zero is zero. But no matter what you're making, 10 times what you're making is amazing. Yeah. And I was just like, so we're gonna be rich and I will have the opportunity to not have to work if I don't want to, which I do want to. But that's crazy. I was just like man man you will go absolutely insane best. if oh you God, don't work. I would die <laughs> you would die i would die of boredom but the point is that when you ask you have to just be open because that wasn't yeah. like in my head the way that i was going to make money the easiest i thought you know i'm still gonna be making that money but then a part of me was like well does that even count like that's jeff making his money and i'm like i remember this is my bank account it Kelsey. counts we had this whole conversation. Remember? I remember you saying like, I just don't know if it counts. And I think I had a like a, a come to Jesus moment with you where I was like, do you get to spend it? <laughs> if you get to spend it, it counts, it counts, okay? <laughs> do you get to experience the benefits of having it? Then yes, it counts. And th that's another thing too. I see this, I do see this with clients all the time where they're like, well, it wasn't, it w wasn't really mine. It was my spouse's. And I'm like, but do you get to spend it? Because- the universe is not just going to give something to your partner unless you're able to, like, it would be clear. It would be very clear. Like, oh, he got this bonus that he can only use at work. Like, that's the only way you won't be able to use it. But if, if it's in your bank account, it's for you. It is for you. And I think that's one of the hardest sometimes maybe for people to understand is like, well, it didn't come to me directly, but you still get to experience it, right? Like, the tree still in my backyard, my joint bank account. So. The trees in my backyard didn't grow for me, but I still get to have the benefit, and I can still say that I manifested those trees because I said when my next house is going to have trees, it, and so those are my trees. I don't care. That's right. I don't care who they who planted them. Yeah, <laughs> and to trees. be clear, I don't think we can manifest for other people, but we right. can definitely manifest with other people. Yes. And Two people is more powerful than one. If, if there's anything that like aligned partnership has taught me is that like you can co-create even more epic. Awesome you got two minds on the problem. Yeah. At a higher level. Yeah. When you have two bodies of energy working towards the same goal. So that's why, I, that's why I tell my clients, like now you have two minds working on this vision. Now I'm holding the, the vision for you so that we can both manifest it faster for you. So, I mean, side tangent, don't you think that partnership is just so underrated? <laughs> okay what do you in what context the fact that more well, people are being are like single young now? people are like are wanting single. to stay single longer and they're just so tainted by their parents generation getting divorced so much and they're just so far deep into this misindependence vibe that they're missing out on partnership not everybody I, but a lot of people i i hear i definitely hear that and i do anybody who's throwing a whole experience out for a couple, you know, for, for a couple of people's other experiences is really like throw the whole baby out with the bathwater kind of thing. Yeah. Anytime you're doing that with anything, I just want to, I always encourage examining it further and, and really being like, but I can def if, if I were younger growing up in this climate of dating, like, oh girl, I could not imagine going on a dating app. Like that makes me like, <laughs> oh, I want to throw up just thinking about it. And the kind of people that are on there, look, you and I both are pretty girls on social media. You can't sit here and tell me you haven't received unsolicited pictures of any <laughs> kind from, from a person or messages or anything like that. Imagine what it would be like on a dating app. So I definitely can see why there would be benefit. However, I do agree that, um, if you find the right person, it, let it change. If it wants to change, like let that opinion, let that perception change. If the right person allows you to do that, you know, and don't yeah. just hold fast to being single, just to be single. I mean, um, yeah, I, I agree. I do. I love independence. I love having my own space. I also really appreciate having somebody with me 
um, on this journey. It's very nice. Yeah. And you can have both. Like there's no rule in life that you can't have yourself and another person. Exactly. Too. Like, you better have what, yourself. Yeah. That's what we're working towards. That's another thing that we're mastering as a humanity is like being in really harmonious relationships. Um, but bringing the relationship thing back to the money, obviously not financial advice because we're not financial advisors. But in my experience, it is a lot easier to manifest more money when you do it in partnership. And I think combined finances are awesome. So I'm just going to throw my two cents out there because I know combined finances are like not that popular anymore, but I it's been really awesome for me. So it's an experience I would highly recommend for people who are in aligned relationships with partners who are have aligned values with finances as well. Yeah. Um, side note, this yeah. does not, this does not help your point at all, but it's funny. And I, I, I heard it on, um, Dr. I think it was Dr. Aman who's on Instagram. He's like this brain doctor. He's very, very big on Instagram shout out, but I think it was him. I hope it was him. Cause I'm about to talk about him. Um, that said single women live longer than married women and married men live longer than single men. Yeah, because we do everything for you. So, <laughs> so to my girls out there, <laughs> I, of course, not not everything is is hard and fast like that. There are exceptions, but that, that's like, you know how they say women live longer than men? Well, this is another one of those generalization research things where they're just like, generally speaking, married women live less long than single women and vice versa for the men. It's very interesting when you think about it like that. I told my husband that and he was just like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, it's like sad, but also hilarious, right? Yeah. You're like, of course, like typical. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So not to detract from anything is just a very interesting antidote that I heard, but not antidote, antidote. An antidote is something you take when you're poisoned. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway back to the money manifest yeah what were we talking about we were talking about how two minds are better than one uh, yes. got that new job and manifesting success stories when it comes to money um but if we're done with stories for now we can move on to a new topic or did you want to share another story uh well i did want to say one last thing about the manifesting of the partner um the yes 100 percent um Obviously, this might go without saying, but make sure you're both on the same page, because I remember uh, this was a long time ago, 2017 or something. I go so confidently. I said, babe, we're going to be millionaires, right? I was so excited. And he just goes, yeah, right. What do you mean? And I was like, don't you dare. I mean, <laughs> don't poop on my vision I mean, for our life. <laughs> and and look, look, I love my husband is one of my biggest supporters, biggest, he is my biggest encourager and any dream, any goal that I have, he is 120% there. I think I just caught him off guard and he is so, he is a very black and white, real Virgo man. He's just like, you know, we also have this, this story about him where he's like, wait, you can feel more, more than one thing at one time. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, you can't. And he was like, this is so weird. He never heard of that. Remember this? He yeah. was like, it was so foreign to him. He's very black and white, very pragmatic, very rational, but he is a hundred percent on board with the power of the universe and like our control over things and like how we can manifest things. So it's, he's, he's an interesting little duck trying to like marry those two ideas together. But when I do have a goal, he's very much on board. And if he isn't, we can both get to a goal that we both can put our effort into, put our manifesting power into that will help us achieve something like the goal that is ideal. So make sure you're on the same page with a goal that you both feel really good about, or at least the next step that you feel really good about and, and then watch the magic happen. But if you got somebody deflating you, find a, find someone that won't, I guess. <laughs> Alignment is key. Yeah. When yeah. I first met Jeff, he was playing small. Well, he was, he's never played small. I mean, he does everything like to the biggest and the fullest and like the highest degree possible, but he was living like basically in the ghetto, which was like totally unnecessary because he was making good money. And I was like, why do you live here? And he was like, oh, I'm just like trying to build up this community. And like, I want to experience the other side. And I'm like, well, you know, you're not necessarily helping these people by like being in the hole with them, like with more money and more resources, you'll be able to help more. And he was just like, oh, yeah, I think you're right. 
like jumping into the hole, not always the most helpful. I guess you could help people to like lift them up from like the bottom, but also it's a lot easier to pull people out from the top. So I was trying, I kind of like over time instilled these like better money beliefs into him. And now he's like, oh my God, remember when I used to think like that? And I was like, uh, yeah, because I thought you were crazy. I was like, what are you doing? Why are you living like that when you could live like this? And I think all it takes is just a loving, a loving nudge. You know, we can have really beneficial uh, influence on our partners when we come from a good place. So yeah, well, and I think start somewhere and works their way up, you know? Yeah, that's what a partnership is supposed to be about. I have had partners that brought out the worst parts of me, the parts that I that I knew weren't me. Um, and I've had partners bring out the best parts of me, the parts that I want to shine and the parts that are truly authentically me. And I think that both people should do that for each other. And I've seen both sides and the other way is passionate, but that's about it. And that's not sustainable at all. And you can have all of that and actually be yourself so always always find that authenticity piece and that that person that brings those best parts out of you and wants you to achieve better and be more like who you dream of being yes ah yay for love we love it okay moving on to some limiting beliefs or stories like as transformational professionals we you know we encounter a lot of people's limiting beliefs and help them work through it so what and are have our common- own yeah and we uh yeah duh we obviously have our own I thought that was <laughs> um I, thought I will talk about mine because <laughs> this is if that's okay this is yeah this is- let's and, share and- ours and then we can share like some common ones we run into also yeah, I'm going to be honest. The reason I feel comfortable sharing mine now at 30, almost 38 is because I've seen so many other people with them. So I'm like, oh, I'm not, I'm not the weird one. This is, this is normal. Okay. Got it. And again, this is aside from all of my training and all of my education. This is just my human self. Like I don't want to stand out, you know, but anyway, so mine, the one that I've struggled with the longest is, I mean, it's wrapped up in so many things, but just this idea that that um, it's hard, money is hard, and there are certain things you will never have because that's just not in your, that's not your fate kind of thing. Like um, my, my and, and it always comes from the parents. Most of the time it comes from the caregivers, the people that you look to about how to do life <laughs> is, is where you get most of your stuff. Like, how are they doing this? What what happened with them? Like my mom received a whole bunch. She's told us this story since I was probably too young to walk, but she got a bunch of money when her first husband tragically passed away. He was in the military. So she got a bunch. He didn't die from the military, but he was happened to be a veteran. So she got a bunch of money when he passed and she was so depressed because of course she lost her husband that she looked at that as blood money. She always called, that's right. what she always called it. Blood money, blood money, blood money. Um, and she gave it away. She gave it all away. And she told us that story so many times. Um, and I think what I picked up from that is like money can be dirty sometimes, right? Which, which is true. But when you, but as a young kid, I didn't know how to distinguish what money was good and what money wasn't, wasn't good. And when I should be able to have it and when I shouldn't be able to have it kind of thing. Um, and then my dad has always just been very, I love you, dad, but he's always been very basic. Like I'm going to get a job, you know, like what most parents do to provide for their kids. I'm going to get a job, be responsible. We're not going to have a lot, but you're going to be taken care of. And that was basically it. And I, he never really had ambitions to do anything else. And neither of my parents really did. They did what they had to get by. And so I grew up thinking money is only there to be just enough so you can get by like that's it and I see people like living these lifestyles of the rich and famous you know do you remember that show you're too young are you too young lifestyles of the rich and famous anyone anyway (laughs) I used to watch (laughs) that show and be like and be like well the only way I could have that kind of money is if I was like a celebrity or famous or um you know if I was it kind of opened the door a little bit but it still seemed impossible like how am I going to do that what does that mean um And I've always kind of had this struggle with money of like, in the past, definitely it's been in the past. I'm going to say it that way because it is in the past. I've had a struggle with money that was like, it's hard. And once you get it, it'll go away really fast. And it all could go away in a blink of an eye. Um, You know, so many things and you're only going to have just enough, but you're going to really work really hard for pennies and all these things. 
uh, that's probably the biggest one. And it's that scarcity mindset of survival mode with money, you know, instead of thriving mode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot. And Kelsey, I want to hear yours because you have a completely as opposite of a childhood as possible from mine, I think, <laughs> uh, or at least vastly, vastly different. So what are, yeah. what are you, some of the things you struggled with? Yeah. So honestly, money so my dad says that everything I touch turns to gold. So that gives you some context for my money story. I have had money issues and I do have money, like mental money blockages for sure to getting to like levels that I want to get to. But luckily, like growing up, my parents did a great job. We lived a nice middle-class life in Southern California, which is very expensive to live there. Yeah. Like basically affluent to be like middle class in Southern California. I definitely know that. Yeah. And I mean, we had a great life. There was definitely moments of like financial struggles that my parents didn't tell me about, which I'm kind of thankful for because, you know, kids shouldn't have to stress about that kind of stuff. And that was what they believed. And I agree with them now, like being a grown up, like, oh, thank you for not sharing all that tragedy yeah. and trauma with me. So it didn't like program me and it didn't mm. scare me. Like I never felt unsafe or like wouldn't have enough. Like I didn't really know what was going on when things were like, you know, hitting the fan, which worked out, I think, in my favor. But these days, I think the thing that I struggle with the most is that my dreams can feel so big and lofty that I'm just like, how, you know, I get stuck on like, how the F am I going to pull that off? And also I take so much responsibility. Like I'm the one who has to make it all happen. It's all on me. Right. So my, micromanagement Jeffrey story, which like universe is like, hello, we're bringing you all this money this other way. Like, this is awesome. Like relax. micromanagement so far and, and the how stick in your beautiful nose where it doesn't belong. Okay. Keep yes. going. And I think sometimes when I get low around the topic of money, I'm questioning my capability. Like, yeah. am I really smart enough? Am I really ambitious enough to achieve that? Am I, do I have enough follow through to actually make that happen? Am I going to get bored before I can reach that goal? I think these are kind of tied to like manifesting generator tendencies a little bit like, oh, am I going to hop onto the next thing before I can really follow through on that other one? So for me, it, it is sometimes a questioning of my capability too. Mm. Um, that can sort of get in my way of like the next level. But I think I've been growing a lot because ever since like Jeff switched to this new job, I've really been like making it okay and like prepping myself to receive and yeah. being like, it's okay if I wasn't the genius mastermind who made it happen. Cause like manifesting wise, I was, but like on a 3d level, like I just need to release that. It has to be like my creation or yeah. my, you know, my course sales or whatever it is that I want the money to come through like that. I just have to release and receive. So that's what I'm working on now. Yeah. And I think I've gotten with, with mine, like it's taken a minute and we're not going to lie. It's taken a minute and a lot of work that I didn't really know was work until I look back and I'm like, wow, I've done so much work on this and really like walked a long path. I'm finding it easier to remind myself and feel that I am safe because when I go down the rabbit hole, as Kelsey and I often advocate, like really go down the rabbit hole of what's the worst thing that could happen. Okay. Then what? Okay. Then what? Okay. Then what? To really get to the root of what that fear is. And my, the root of my fear is that it's all going to drop out from underneath me because so many things have in my, you know, early, early years drop out from underneath me and I'm going to be left unaware and without any choices, without any um, ability to make it better. <laughs> but that's ridiculous yeah. because for the simple fact that that's not who I am. Do you know how many things need to happen before I'm in that position? So right. many events need to occur before I'm in that position. And I'm going to see the first one of those and write the ship immediately. I know that I'm the kind of person that's going to do what it takes to not only be okay, but to thrive because I've, I've done it my entire life. And I think that a lot of you listeners will, can probably relate to that. You've survived everything you've been through. So if you follow that rabbit down the hole, um, just know that there are so many things that need to happen before that one thing happens that you're, it's never going to happen. You're never going to let it happen. I'm never going to let it happen. So I can 
more easily remind myself that I am safe. I have control over the situation and I'm being taken care of. What's the Buffalo card? You are provided for in all ways. Sorry, nobody knows what I'm talking about. I have this card on my desk uh, when I was feeling super scarce, you know, scarcity mindset one day. I pulled a card for myself from the Power Animal Oracle deck. Highly recommend, but I pulled the Buffalo card, which is the abundance card, incidentally. It's the exact card that I needed. Don't know how that happens, but it just seems to happen often. And it says, you are provided for in all ways. And so I keep it here on my desk to remind myself when I need that reminder. And I highly suggest all of you come up with a good reminder for yourselves. Post it somewhere you can see it because we all need those reminders sometimes. But it has gotten so much easier. And I just, as you said, Kelsey, you've just been feeling more ease. I've been feeling more ease because I've given myself permission to feel some damn ease. <laughs> like Finally. <laughs> permission granted. Yes. Or in step, granting yourself that permission. And I think it's so interesting that you and I kind of cover a pretty big spectrum of like the subconscious money fears because your mm. subconscious money fear is like, oh my gosh, what if it went to nothing? Like, what if we run out? What if there's not enough? And like my subconscious money fear is like, what if I don't make as much as I'm trying to make? And then what does that mean about me? Like, what if right. I never hit my goal, you know? And it's the only reason why a part of me is scared of that is because that part of me would probably make it mean that I'm not good enough. I couldn't do it. I can't do it. I'm not capable of getting what I want, you know, which would be like very detrimental to someone who identifies as a manifesting queen and is a manifesting queen and is so, um, thinks it's so important to get what you want out of life because it is. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, it's interesting that we cover both, both sides of the spectrum because there's always like, there's always fear on one end of the other, right? And there's always stress when it comes to money, like no matter what level you're at. So people think, oh, if it was so much money, probably never worry. No, they just have a different set of worries. <laughs> you know, they're Mo trying money, not to get problems. sued. They're trying, you know, whatever other problems they have, maybe they deployed too much capital into a bad deal and Kelsey. lost a big ton of money. Kelsey, 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 Kelsey. I just realized something. So uh, guys, between these shows, this is being recorded on the same day. I, I only just went and dropped my kid off, came back and we picked up on episode two. Okay. So the funny thing is in between the shows, you know, I drop in my kid off on the way home. I turn the radio on and the first song I hear is Mo Money, More Problems by Puff Daddy, P. Diddy and Mace and Notorious B.I.G. It's one of my favorite songs. Um, but <laughs> when you just said that, I was like, Oh my God, I just heard that song. <laughs> I just heard that song like just a few minutes ago. There's this belief that there are that more money, mo problems. And I don't, mo problems. I don't believe it's more problems. I believe it is different challenges, yeah. different things that you don't have to deal with right now being where you are. And if you were given a million dollars tomorrow, I can guarantee you, you'd have different challenges. You'd have, you'd have cousins calling you that never talked to you in your life telling you, <laughs> That yeah, they want to be your best money, friend and more stuff. Problems narrative is just different an challenges. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think. I, yeah, I definitely think it's just more money, different problems, because every level of life has a new set of challenges, right? Like even this next chapter that I'm gonna go into of like maybe more receivership, like that's hard for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. That we can agree on. Work. It is very hard for Kelsey and I to allow and receive, to be able to just kind of sit back and receive. Um, is very difficult because you want to be like, okay, but shouldn't I be doing something? Should I do something? I got to do something, right? What do I got to do? I got to, okay, but how? Okay, but how? Like we're just constantly in our heads. So leaning back and just letting yourself receive is, <laughs> that's a challenge. Hey there, we hope you're enjoying this episode so far, but if you want to listen to the whole thing, we're going to invite you over to our podcast, either search for High Vibe on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you guys listen to podcasts, or even better, if you want to watch the extended video version of this episode that's even longer than the actual podcast itself, head over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash high vibe. Lindsay, tell them what's awesome about the Patreon. The Patreon is where we have all of our extended episodes. As Kelsey said, we have it on video so you can actually see the things that we're talking about. Sometimes we have visual visual aids and it's nice to know what we're talking about we also have hangouts that we do sometimes that are exclusive to patreon people um, and you can get started with all of this and bonus content and everything that we have only for the patreon people for as little as three dollars i think it's three dollars and 33 cents a month 
and that's it. And you guys can get all the benefits and all access to everything that we put in there. Really yeah. cool. It's really cool, really fun, super easy to join. And you guys don't even have to do that to finish this episode. If you're like, screw it, I don't want to pay any money. I just want to hear the rest of this episode. Go to our podcast, High Vibe in It. Search for it wherever you listen. It's totally free. Um, Either way, enjoy the rest of the show wherever you choose to enjoy it. And we will see you guys next week because we do a new one every week. Adios. Bye. Bye.